let's take a look at an example of this. Up top here, I just made up a compound. Um, and you can see the Lewis structure, it's quite cluttered. There's a lot of stuff. So let's see how we're gonna convert this Lewis structure into what's more commonly used, the skeletal structure. So one hint is to number things. That way you'll keep track of how much stuff you have and what goes where. So we'll number this as one, two, three, four, five. And then we'll just pause there for a second, right? So we're gonna start with this carbon. And remember the carbon is just gonna be the endpoint of a line. So that carbon is represented right there. Next up, we come to this nitrogen, number two. And so nitrogen, we have to explicitly draw because it's not carbon. So we have to put a nitrogen there. And then we have to explicitly draw the hydrogens attached to that nitrogen. We can draw it as a bond, same thing we did in the, in the up structure, or you can just draw the H right next to it. And there's an assumed that there's a bond there. We do not have to include the lone pair of the nitrogen because we assume that our audience knows that. Next up, we're going to carbon number three. So just another line. So this carbon is represented right there. And then we go to carbon four and five, which are double bonded. So we go down to carbon four and then we draw a double bond to carbons four and five. So that is represented right there. And now note how this oxygen right here is on the opposite side of this carbon. You must draw it that way. It must be on the opposite um, end of this other carbon. And we'll see why later on. So we have to draw in the opposite direction. So there's that oxygen. Again, we don't have to um, put any lone pairs there. We can continue our counting, call this number six, seven, eight, nine. And so we're on that oxygen. So we'll have carbons seven, eight, and then nine, All right? So seven, eight, nine. And then we see carbon number nine over here is doubly bound to an oxygen. So we need to draw a double bond and to an oxygen. So that takes care of that. Notice we don't have to draw the, the other hydrogen because it's attached to carbon. And then we can number this 10 and 11. And so we can just draw a line. There's number 10 and then there's number 11. It's an NH2, so we just put NH2. And then we can just get rid of all of our little markings. And so these two structures are exactly the same. You can see how the bottom one is gonna be much quicker to write out, but they both convey the same amount of information except the bottom one does it in a much more clear way. It's not as cluttered. Some other stuff to just keep in mind. You have to show formal charge. So make sure you know what formal charge is. It must be shown. So review your Chem 101. Remember that formal charge is equal to the valence electrons in a neutral atom by itself minus the number of electrons in lone pairs minus the number of bonds. So let's take a look at that. So for example, if you have something like this, if we were to take a look at the formal charge of this oxygen right here, oxygen normally has six valence electrons. Here it's got six um, lone pair electrons and then one bond. So six minus six minus one is negative one. So it has a formal charge of negative one. So you'd have to put a negative symbol in there. 
And so if you think about how we draw that in the skeletal structure, we just draw it like this, right? There's the same structure on both sides. You can see the one on the right is a lot quicker to draw. We do not have to draw any of the lone pairs, but we do have to have that formal charge there. We assume that our audience is knowledgeable and thus know that since the oxygen has a negative charge, it must have uh, three lone pairs or six lone electrons. Some other hints, hydrogen, it only ever forms one bond, so it's always going to be terminal. Oxygen generally forms two bonds, but it can form one bond or three bonds, but it'll have a formal charge then. So we saw this example before, right there. Remember this over here is a CH3, and so it has a negative formal charge. And so there are three lone pairs of electrons here. They're just not explicitly drawn. We could have neutral oxygen like that with, two, with uh, two bonds. And again, there are two lone pairs here. They're just not explicitly drawn. And then finally, we can have an oxygen with three bonds. And when we do that, there's only one lone pair here. So if you think about the formal charge here, it's positive. But again, we don't have to draw these lone pairs. We can simply leave it like that. Nitrogen generally forms three bonds. So remember this end of the line here, that's a CH3. And so it's bonded to, to two other hydrogens. So here it's neutral, it normally has five valence electrons. Here it does have a lone pair, but again, it's not explicitly drawn. It can also form four bonds. Think about your polyatomic ion of ammonium or this kind of methyl ammonium. Right, and now we have this positive charge on this nitrogen and no lone pairs. But again, we, we don't have to draw lone pairs because we assume our audience is knowledgeable and understands this stuff. And so take a look at some of these kind of compounds I just pulled pictures of from the internet. And you can see some of the things that I'm talking about. So if you Google, you know, structure of, you know, a sugar of glucose, something like that, you'll see these line structures. They're all going to be in these skeletal structures. So you need to be very, very, very familiar with these structures. Um, so here's picture representations of your amino acids, right? All of these are carbons. That's a carbon right there. And that's a CH2 right there, right? It has two bonds. Carbon has four. So that must mean that there's two other H's there. Um, notice how these oxygens, none of them have lone pairs included. That's totally A-OK. -okay. Um, notice this nitrogen. That nitrogen does have a lone pair. It's just not included. This nitrogen over here, however, has a positive charge, and thus it does not have a lone pair. Um, you can see over here we've got this negative charge, but no lone pair shown. And so that's totally A-OK. -okay. We just assume that our audience is knowledgeable. So there's the amino acids that make up all the enzymes and muscles of your body. Um, here's just some like aroma compounds in common in uh, common flowers, and you can see they're all written in this skeletal structure form. You can think about how big of a pain it would be to draw these in terms of Lewis structures where you're explicitly writing out these hydrogens. Uh, and, and then here's just some kind of cool drugs, right? Ephedrine, uh, LSD, cocaine, THC, morphine, um, right? You can see they're all written in these skeletal structure type of things. So I'd expect you to be able to draw these skeletal structures if given the Lewis structure, or if given the skeletal structure, be able to identify how many hydrogens any one of these carbons has. Does this nitrogen have a lone pair? Does this oxygen have a lone pair? Should there be a formal charge somewhere? Those types of questions. You want to get really good at drawing these Lewis structures. Um, so just look up some examples on the internet. There's plenty of them. And take a look at the homework as well. But be very comfortable drawing skeletal structures.